Hey guys, this is David. Today we're going to be taking a look at the motherboard. We got the Gigabyte 990FXA DU UD3 R5 motherboard. We're going to be doing an unboxing of it to see what all comes with it and kind of go over some of the features of it. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Alright guys, like I said in the intro, we're going to be taking a look at this motherboard today. It's a Gigabyte 990FXA UD3 R5 motherboard. Um, it, uh, it fits the uh, AM3, AM3 Plus sockets, which is usually going to be your FX uh, processor. Uh, we're going to do an unboxing, see what all comes with it, and um, go over some of the benefits of it. Here we go. You ready? Ah, looky there. I know how to open a box. I'm special. And on top, we have the motherboard and have an anti-static bag. We'll get to that in a second. Then you have a piece of cardboard. Just a little bit of filler. Okay, you got your I.O. shield. Um, you have to have one of these to put in the back of your case to help keep rodents and bugs out of the inside of your case or your motherboard. Put that to the side. Um, with this particular motherboard, they give you four SATA cables. That's for your hard drives, your SSDs, your optical drives. Uh, most, a lot of peripherals runs off of SATA. They give you four cables. They give you an S, uh, SLI bridge for video graphics card. I don't know why they don't have one in here for AMD cards. They run an AMD processor, but apparently they don't think you need one. Of course, Nowadays, video cards you don't need no one. Um, if you go with the newer series, I think even the 300 series, you don't have to uh, have a. They they communicate through the motherboard instead of on the graphics card itself. Uh, we have a multilingual instruction guidebook. That should cover pretty well any language, even if you don't speak English. It ought to cover. It probably covers everything but English. They give you a couple little badges here you can put on your uh, on your case. One's do the Dolby Home Theater. The other one's a Gigabyte Ultra Durable Built-in. If you want to put them on your case, I won't be using those. You have your uh, uh, usual manual here. This will actually come in pretty handy. Um, uh, whenever we get on the board, you'll see it's got four DIMM slots. If you're only using two, you'll have to look in there to see which ones is uh, to put your uh, RAM sticks into dual channel for you can get that benefit out of the RAM so it'll be a little bit faster for you. And you have your uh, all your drives for your motherboard, which we won't be using. We'll be going to Gigabyte itself and downloading the latest versions. Because I'm sure them things are probably pretty old by now. And other than that, guys, the box is empty. Nothing else. <coughs> and as you guys can see, I'm not wearing an anti-static strap. Um, I've been building computers for quite some time now. I've never used one. I always keep a computer case or something big and metal close to me. I would keep touching the static, static, uh, get rid of the static. I'm also working on a thick rubber mat. And I'm not on carpet, I'm on a wooden floor in this room, guys. So, anti-static ain't a big deal to me. Alright, let's keep that in mind. Uh, take a piece of tape off the back of it. And you also can see the way I handle my porch. There ain't gonna be no chance of static getting uh, shock in the porch. Because of the way I handle the porch. You can see right there I'm handling by the edge. My fingers are on the metal plate that's on the back. My front fingers are on the plastic pieces. I'm not touching, ain't touching none of the outlets. I ain't touching none of the, none of the little pokey things on the back. Nothing like that. So I don't have to worry that much about static. Alright. Uh, where to start? Okay, there's your AM3 Plus socket for your FX processor. There's your hold downs for your CPU uh, if you use the heat, uh, stock heat sinks. Up there's your CPU fan header. You got a power fan header. You got your 24 pin connector. You have system fan one. Right here beside that 
you have your SATA ports with six SATA ports and they all run at 3G speeds or 6G, I'm sorry, SATA 3, 6, 6 gigabit per second speeds out of all of them so you don't have to worry about which one's just 3G, uh, SATA 3 and which one's a SATA 2 down here in the bottom corner down here uh, let me slide that if we can see it right here in the bottom corner you can tell it's all different colors that's for your power switch your L, uh, reset switch power switch power LED or drive activity uh, you got your USB 2 or USB 3 I'm sorry that's for your USB 3 then you have three of them for your USB 2 for your front panel connectors depending on the case you got depending on what uh, what connectors you have for your USB ports on the front of your case you also have your front audio and there's another system fan, system fan 2 uh, this thing's only got two system fans on that one power fan which is plenty for me, I only run two fans in my system so that, this, that fits my situation fine we got one PCI times 16 slot here you got the second one PCI times 16 slot to there. That way, if you want to crossfire your uh, graphics cards, you're more than more than capable. 16 slot there, 16 slot there. You got a times four here and a times four here. You got PCI Express. I don't even know why they add these. Cause I guess if you want to use older uh, legacy equipment, you can still use them. I guess. You got PCI Express one slot there and there. You can have two of those. Um, you have active cooling on your on your uh, north bridge chip set up here now here's your south bridge which got a heat sink on it as well to help get rid of the heat that they uh, create here's your ram slots like I was saying earlier guys you got four slots in my situation I'm only going to be filling up two slots so I will need to look at the manual and see if I use the gray ones or the black ones to determine which one's best for my uh, dual channel operations as far as the back ports on this thing goes that you'll be using you got two USB two more USB you got two four six eight USB twos you got two USB threes you got a uh, one gigabyte Ethernet connection you have your old uh, legacy mouse and keyboard port here if you're still using one of those you have your uh, six spots here for your 7.1 surround sound audio and these down here is the E port, uh, the E SATA port which I never used but they came on the board as you can tell on the back of this motherboard they have no place for a radio out because um, if you're going to be spending this kind of money and buying this kind of board you're going to be using a discrete graphics card so they don't have no ports back here for your video out or for your audio out um, as you can tell by looking at the board it is a full ATX board you have nine spots for it to screw into your motherboard um, so whenever you're buying the case make sure it's going to support the ATX factor it ain't going to be a mini ITX you're trying to put an ATX motherboard into it um, it's all black and white you know, it's all black and gray white nice looking board if you look going for an all white uh, all black build I think it looked pretty good that's kind of what I'm going for within this build I'm doing now pretty much all black you know them little bit of white accents ain't gonna bother me too bad the gray it kind of matches the gray that's on my graphics card so it will go pretty good um yeah I guess but that's about it for the motherboard there ain't a whole lot to talk about on them um, Hit the like button if you liked what you seen. Hit the dislike button if you didn't like what you seen. Uh, let me know in the comments if there's something else you think I should have pointed out on this uh, motherboard for this video. Until next time, you guys be safe and I'll see you in the next video.